California Senator Alex Padilla, who sits on the Judiciary and Homeland Security Committee. Senator, it's great to see you always. I want to begin by getting your thoughts on this historic confirmation. Uh, well, Jose, it is a great day, a day of joy, a day of celebration. Uh, the confirmation vote yesterday wasn't just a historic, uh, but I can't wait to see the impact of, I'm going to go ahead and call her Justice uh, Jackson now uh, in the Supreme Court. You and I spoke earlier in the process when we celebrated the historic nature of her nomination. Uh, and of course, as uh, we've just been hearing, the uh, confirmation hearings themselves should have been more respectful, should have been uh, uh, a better demeanor. Uh, but the more that some of the Republicans tried to attack her, twist her record, uh, and undermine her credentials, I think the better she looked in the process and made the even better impression to the American people that uh, she will serve on the Supreme Court, she will serve uh, extremely, extremely well. And in the process, both it restores some of the faith in the institution that has been challenged and be that ray of hope for future generations, little girls, little boys uh, that can see themselves in Justice Jackson. You know, I keep thinking of uh, that little boy that grew up in Pacoima and uh, when, uh, we're told, when you were told oh, so many times, don't go there, don't have those dreams, don't don't think that you can go into places where, well, people like you aren't normally at. Just what you're thinking, you know? Yeah, and no, I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, uh, for those who watched the uh, hearings closely uh, on that final day of voting, I was one of the last members to ask questions and saved my very last question uh, exactly to make that point. I shared publicly uh, what a story that I've shared with a lot of friends over the years privately when one of my high school students, excuse me, teachers, discouraged me from applying to MIT because he didn't want me to be disappointed by not getting in. Of course, who does that? We're supposed to be inspiring the next generation. And I had a strong hunch that uh, uh, now Justice Jackson had a similar experience. And when she shared, not that, but her experience of being a freshman at Harvard uh, and that feeling of not belonging, I can relate to that. I certainly went through those emotions. But her advice to young people and future generations of when you come up against those challenges and obstacles to persevere. It's through that perseverance that we will succeed because every young person has that tremendous potential. And when we all do that, we help our nation work towards being that more perfect union. And a point of personal privilege, Jose, it was extra meaningful to me yesterday to cast that vote with my wife, Angela, uh, and uh, my son, Alex, in the gallery watching. So uh, it's uh, little uh, black girls, little black boys, little bo girls and boys of color throughout the country that uh, now see this as normal for that young uh, Latino kid from Pacoima to be casting a vote and asking questions of a Supreme Court nominee. And yes, the first African-American woman bringing her credentials and life experience to the deliberations of the highest court in the land. And Senator, I just want to, before I let you go, I want to talk about uh, Title 42. As you know, the yes. president announced that it would be uh, finished by the end of, of May. Some of your Republican and Democratic colleagues have uh, introduced a bill that would block Title 42 from being lifted until the administration presents a plan to deal with the potential influx of migrants. W what do you make of this? Look, on the one hand, I, I agree. When we lift Title 42, uh, we need to make sure that it's done on an orderly and safe and humane basis. Uh, and so right now is the time for senators, including myself, I'm a member of the Homeland Security Committee as well, to be asking those questions of the administration, including uh, the Homeland Security Secretary. We have begun and we're getting that information. What is the plan? But it's important to remember this. Number one, there's people who come to the United States for a number of reasons, tourist visas, work visas. And yes, it is legal to come to the United States seeking asylum uh, for a number of reasons. That is lawful. And Title 42, it was never an immigration policy. It was a public health policy put in place in the beginning of COVID. If COVID numbers are way down, vaccines are up and masks are coming off, the justification for Title 42 is no longer there. And so it's right to uh, end Title 42 and have that safe, orderly, humane process uh, restored because it certainly was uh, decimated by the prior administration. And more than 1.2 million people had no access to even request asylum because of Title 42. Exactly. It is a right to seek asylum. Senator Alex Padilla, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for being with us this morning.
Thank you. Take care.